Hey guys, welcome to Jobartech channel. In today's video, we're going to create a search bar for the app that we are building. Here is the simple app that we have integrated to Firestore from our last video. And today, we'll create a search bar here at the app bar using the search delegate from Flutter SDK so that users can simply search for their forever here even if they knew that forever is just an illusion. Let's still give them the opportunity to try. Yes! Anyways, this is now the end result that we are aiming for. We have this ugly search bar here, and once we click on this, we get to the actual screen where we can type the name of the chicks we want to search. While our search bar is empty, we are seeing the search history that the user had searched. And when we try to type something, a list of suggestions based on what we are typing appears here. And as we continue, it filters out until it matches the name that we are typing. This helps users know beforehand if they have hope or they're just daydreaming. What? So this is the overall feature that we're gonna develop. But for you not to get bored watching me typing like a turtle, I skip the coding part and will just simply show you the code and how I did it. So first thing first, inside your features directory, create a search directory or whatever name you want. And inside the search directory, create an application, domain, and presentation folders. Inside this presentation folder, create a search screen that dart file, create a search screen class, and extend the search delegate class. When you extend this search delegate class, you are required to override these four methods. Let's take a look at this one by one. This build actions method returns a list of widgets. That is what you can see at the trailing end part of our search bar. So I added this search icon button that is calling this show results method. If we see this show results method, this is a method provided by the search delegate. So I overridden it to add a call to fetch from our database based on the query provided by the user. I also added this clear icon button here to be able to clear the text field when needed. Down here is the build leading method that returns a widget. This is the leading of our search bar that you can see over here. So I return this arrow back icon button, calling the close method and passing both the context and a null result. The next is this build results method. This is the widget where we can display the result of our search. And lastly, this build suggestions. This is the widget we are currently seeing here. So what we are doing here is returning the search build suggestions widget that I have created when our search text field is empty and returning the search build results widget when it's not. This search build suggestions widget is just a plain and simple widget that displays a list of hard-coded search histories using this grid layout. And this search build results widget is also a plain and simple widget that watches the stream provider and passes its result to this user's fetch widget that is responsible for displaying the result in a list view that's separated. So we don't have any fancy logic here in our UI. It's all plain and simple UI that only displays data. In order to use this search screen, we need to head over to our home app bar and invoke the show search method, passing in both the context and delegate. This delegate refers to the search screen we have just fashioned. You also have the option to determine whether or not to use root navigator. Easy peasy, isn't it? 
So how are we fetching search results here? As you can see, we have this search icon button here. And once we tap on this, it fires this show results method, which is calling this fetch search results method. And if we see the definition of this method, we can see that what it only does is to update this search provider. And when this search provider is updated, this app user stream provider here that is watching for this search provider will get triggered causing this search app users method to get fired. And what this does is to fetch the users and filters the users based on the user's name that matches the search query. This stream provider now contains the result of this method and reveals the UI to display the data that it contains. So there, I hope you got the flow here. But you might say, but that is when we press the search icon. How about fetching the results while typing? Okay, if we see the documentation of this build suggestions method, it says that the delegate method called whenever the content of the query changes. That is why we are calling this submit search method inside here. So while we are typing, this build suggestions is calling this submit search that is responsible for updating the search provider, causing this stream provider to fetch the app users, and then display its results here in our UI. using the list view that's separated. Alright, that gives you a good idea of how our search bar functions. If there is unclear and needs clarification, please feel free to ask questions in the comment section below for me to be able to assist you. While our search bar functions effectively, it's important to note that our current setup is only best suited for a small data set and straightforward searching. For more intensive datasets or advanced search functionalities, conducting search on the back end becomes imperative. As of now, Firestore doesn't support full text search capabilities, which is something we hope to see in the future updates. In such scenarios, third party search services like Elasticsearch or Algolia come in handy. So, in our next video, We'll delve into integrating Algolia with our app, leveraging its API for backend searching. Okay, back to our search bar field. If you want to customize the design of this search bar field, what you can simply do is to override the search field decoration theme and design it according to your liking. And if you want to change this search field label over here, you can simply override the search field label and return the value you want. And if you want to change the keyboard type, you can simply override the keyboard type and return the keyboard type you want. Just like that. You can see all the methods and fields that you can override by going inside this definition of search delegate class. Alright, that's it for today guys. Before we close, let's quickly summarize what we have covered today. We dive deeper into creating a functional search bar in Flutter using the search delegate class. We learned about structuring our directories, defining the search functionalities, and even customizing the look and feel of the search bar. Flutter is all about flexibility, and with the knowledge shared today, you now have the tool to craft a great user experience in any application you build. Thank you so much for tuning in guys. If this video helped you out, please give it a big thumbs up, share it with your fellow Flutter enthusiasts, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button because this would encourage me to create more valuable content like this.